Russian scientist named Viktor Gorbinikov, who's an etymologist. You know, he studied bugs, and he would go on long journeys and adventures, and he would study bugs. One day, he he noticed a, a beetle seemed to be floating. It didn't seem to be flying. Upon further discovery, he realized that this particular beetle, which is known as the scarab, its wings create uh, this anti-gravitational field that just completely defies gravity and allows it to float. You know, this man discovered this. He created his own levitation board, his own hoverboard, which reportedly reached speeds of up to a thousand miles per hour. And of course, the scientific community were skeptics of it and, you know, basically said he was lying and it was a fraud. And, you know, we never heard about this. Now, if this guy discovered this way back then, how far advanced do you think technology is that the, that the government and the military and the CIA and the NSA and all them have? It's, it's sort of like back in medieval times where the peasants weren't allowed to read. You remember that? Actually, hell, you remember in slavery, it was literally illegal for slaves to read? Think about this. Think about, think about how certain information and technology is, is held captive or held away from the general public. And also, you know, it makes me think about why, why the scarab was so sacred to ancient Egyptians and why they had so many sculptures and paintings depicting this particular beetle. And upon further in inspection of its wings, it was discovered that this beetle, um, its wings were not necessarily designed to be aerodynamic, you know, but they formed a hexagonal honeycomb style, honeycomb type structure. And um, the wings actually had hairs on them, you know, and, and bumps and, and they had grooves on them. And this guy was born in 1927. And he actually got a patent for this in 93. So, you know, you got to it makes it kind of makes you wonder when when technology drastically changed after World War II and all the Nazi scientists came over to America and started the NSA and the CIA under Operation Paperclip. And when MK Ultra started and the whole Hollywood Mossad did y'all know that Walt Disney, did y'all know that Disney Studios was used as a military base? That's where they made all the propaganda films. It's well documented. You can look it up. It's a great day today. Learn something new today. He was like, no, no, the world is flat. <laughs> and then people... I'd like to thank everybody who donated to the cause. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. However, I made a few alterations to the campaign by raising the original amount from 200000 to a million because... I feel like a lot of people have made a lot of valid um, suggestions. So I have come to the conclusion that instead of just sending one satellite or several satellites into space, I will be raising funds to try every available experiment and test, including but not limited to uh, weather balloons, drones, uh, blimps even, um, high altitude, uh, balloons and whatever else um, or any type of suggestion um, that anybody has so yeah so I'll be documenting this whole process and I'll keep everybody updated on this road to a million and how the funds will be used to to research and come to a conclusion thank you all for participating Bands. in between the two of them what I didn't like was that conversations devolved into the strangest places. Because then in like the Instagram comment section, people were like, yeah, don't let them pull the wool over your eyes. <laughs> this, is, this is white science. This is what... Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, look right here.